Hey what is up everyone welcome to another episode of personal finance series every thursday is a personal finance series episode in this series we talk about everything related to money and in this episode we're going to talk about what are some of the financial decisions you have to take before coming to united states and after coming to united states so let's get started Something came in mail today. This is the lenses which I got. I already opened it because I was too excited, but I also wanted to unbox some of it in front of you. I just wanted to confirm if it was a lens or not. So it is a lens. By the way, skip to this part if you really want to get to the actual part of the video. And in this Saturday's video, you will understand why I'm ordering all these fancy lenses, camera, and all of that. So don't miss out this Saturday's vlog. And then Sunday's video is going to be special video i'm doing a music video so hopefully you watch that please i need a lot of support because it's my first cinematic full production video <laughs> music video so i just wanted this one lens but obviously during black friday there's a lot of deals going on so with this lens all of this extra stuff came in um, this is memory card i also got a usb dock so for some cameras this lens will not work so they have already sent me the adapter for it so your case is a better word it comes with a lot of fun stuff in cleaning the camera and the lenses there's a strap uh, basically a backpack but it it can turn into a pouch if you want to put your lens or things like that mal masala idhar hi hai lot of documentation which i never read comes in a really nice pouch and wow this is beautiful oh, hey hey again sorry for bruno intervention bruno go i'm filming the video the smell of this new technology gadget i'm a big fan of technology gadget you can ask caitlin i spend a lot of money on technology time to change the lens this is the first time ever i'm putting the lens on the camera all right all right all right does it look different i think it does look different there was a problem with christmas lights oh, by the way christmas is christmas tree is also up but so i had to turn off that light and turn the other light to give that effect but what is it how does it look like i think everything must be blur now as soon as i come closer everything behind me is blur that's the quality of this lens comment and let me know do you see any difference uh, is there any viewing difference at all if it is not then my money is wasted <laughs> So there's two main things we're going to talk about the money which you need to bring to United States how do you bring that forex cards and cash and then second part we'll talk about which is opening up the bank account in United States what is required to open the bank account which bank to go to and how to transfer the money from India to US bank account all right let's start with number one thing which is forex card for people who don't know what is forex card forex card is basically a prepaid debit card or a credit card to give you a very simple example uh, back in the days when you had those prepaid uh, sim cards where you had to put in the balance to use the talk time it's exactly like that you have this card where you have to put in the money so let's say you put in 75000 rupees in india and that is roughly about $1000 in united states so when you come here you have roughly about $1000 and you swipe it to purchase anything to buy anything to eat or to travel to do whatever so you want using that card up to $1000 so the next thing is do you even need this uh, my answer to that is yes you do need that because initially you won't have your bank account you won't have credit card you won't have debit card so something you need uh, an electronic transaction so it's better to use that instead of using your cash uh, so i would carry that just for your initial few days i don't think you will be using it more than 2 weeks next thing i want to talk about is how much money should we put in this forex card my answer to that is 500 to 1000 not more than that again you will only use it for your initial days next question is which one should we pick there are so many of them and i do agree there are so many of them i'm going to give you five and then i'll give you a list of things which you can use to compare it because right now there is this offers going on but maybe when you are watching this after 5 months maybe this offers will not apply 
apply so i'm gonna tell you what to look for in these cards while you are choosing choosing five cards which i saw in my research one was icici multi-currency forex card axis bank forensic card uh yes bank forensic card hdfc and thomas cook the only thing the only difference in thomas cook versus other banks were thomas cook was mastercard and the, all the other one was visa card visa is highly acceptable over here compared to mastercard so there might be some places they might not accept mastercard most likely that won't happen but i've seen where that they say that they don't accept mastercard so go for visa card instead now here's are the things which you should be looking when you are buying this uh, the number one thing is travel insurance does your card have travel insurance if it does then you don't have to buy externally any travel insurance and second thing is the fees initial fees and the reloading fees so every time you reload the card you will have to pay money to it and one is atm withdrawal charge now there's a trick between atm withdrawal charge when you withdraw the money from atm over here you will be charged from this bank and also from your bank so most likely you will get double charge so more i hope you never have to remove the money from your forex card as a cash and you will always use as a transaction uh, that's why you need to carry cash separately and last but not the least is the currency conversion charge or transaction charge does it uh, charge you anything for transaction in transaction there are two things uh, the normal swipe for buying things uh, that's a normal transaction but then there is also currency conversion charge so do you get a locked in charge or is it fluctuation so and it doesn't matter which one it is just you know be aware that those are the things you should be looking when you're comparing those uh, hopefully most card will not charge you anything for transaction the only charge you will get is the conversion charge and how much is that so look for that that's why they are not my favorite because there are so many charges involved in it and there are, i've seen some card where you also have to pay to see your balance uh, that's just stupid to me because you're buying a card you want to check your balance and you have to pay for checking your balance that's just weird to me moving on to the next topic which is cash do you even need to carry cash uh, is cash required and if you do then how much do you should how much should you carry yes you should carry some cash uh, just because uh, what if your forex card stop working uh, what if it doesn't detect somewhere what what if it gets stolen so having a, a secondary option a fallback option is very good so yes you should carry how much should you carry roughly 200 to 300 maybe let's say max 400 dollars you shouldn't be carrying more than that now which bills to carry <laughs> that was another question i had on instagram that how much one dollar bill should we carry how much five dollars should we carry how much ten dollars should be you should carry more of and five dollars because majority of coffee beverages type of drink you will get it for five dollars majority of meals type of thing you will get it under ten dollars so those are the two main notes you will be using definitely carry some of the one dollar bills because they will be also helpful when you are when there are something extra like six dollars or eleven dollars or twelve dollars so those are the three main things don't carry hundreds um don't carry 20s uh, just carry 10 5 1 and then maybe 150 just in case uh, if you need to make a bigger transaction but that's rub that's about it you don't need to make dude you don't need to bring more than that 200 to 300 dollars is more than enough all right now that you have that money carried landed in united states uh, what do you do like uh, what bank account to open how do you deposit those money what are the different bank accounts so let's start with bank accounts in united states there are two main types of bank account checking account and savings account saving accounts we're going to talk about in a separate video you don't need to open it as soon as you land that is after you get your on-campus job after you start saving some money you don't need that for the beginning part of it checking accounts and now it sounds checking is like what is checking accounts if we don't use that in india checking account is basically a day-to-day -day transactional account so anytime you make more than 10 15 transaction a day that's the account you will use saving accounts you are only allowed to make five to six transaction after that every transaction you will be charged five to ten dollars per transaction so that's why saving accounts you shouldn't be using it you should be using a checking account that is like our normal regular account in india now that you understood checking account and saving accounts so there's also something called college accounts these college accounts are mainly for students from you know for high school from 17 to 24 years of old again depending on the banks but uh, below 24 and above 17 that's kind of the rule for 
college checking account or college savings accounts now why these accounts are important and you will be opening college accounts and you shouldn't be opening normal account unless you are about 24 and why because every time you open a bank account over here there's a monthly service fee which you need to pay to have a bank account now there are ways to waive off those and one of those is if you open a college account you won't be charged any monthly fees it will be zero month zero dollars monthly fees which means you can have account for free as long as you finish your graduation before five years so that's the limit you have so you will have to mention that when you are opening up your bank account and people who are about 24 is i know there are monthly monthly charges and that ranges anywhere from five dollars to fifteen dollars depending on which bank you go to and there are ways to wave off that as well uh, check with your bank what are those ways uh, ways to waive off those fees okay now the main question is which bank should we go to open our account uh, my recommendation is chase bank account because that's what i've been using that's what my entire batch used it a lot of my uh, you know batchmates and my friends used bank of america and they didn't then they later moved to chase because chase has a better app uh, better ui uh, i'm i'm a you know customer from last five six years seven years now so everything is awesome over there they also have a awesome credit cards one of the best credit cards are in chase so if you want if you in future after one year or two years when you get a credit card everything will be in one app and one website instead of using multiple websites so that's my recommendation and in fact if you use the link in the description you will get $50 to open your bank account I'll also get $50 but you will also get $50 and right now in Chase before 14 January you open the bank account uh, college account you will get $100 bonus so go and open it right now obviously when you are not in India but when you reach there open Chase so you will get $150 total use the link in the description you can totally open the bank account online you don't have to go to the branch but if you feel more comfortable going to the branch you can do that as well now what is required to open the bank account it's very simple process uh, you need your student id so before even you go to bank you need to go to your college to get your student id uh, you need your i20 or a letter which says that you are admitted in this college your college name and your graduation date because that's what it's going to determine that you how long it will be a college account and then when and later on they will change your college account to professional account and you will also need your passport and visa which will be on your passport so as soon as you have all of this document you can upload it online or you can go to the branch and submit it and i think within two hours your bank account will be open and i think you will get the debit card two days later or three days later and you should be using your bank debit card instead of your any other forex card or cash or anything next topic is how do we transfer the money like let's say if we have a loan uh, we want to disperse this loan into our us bank account how do we do that uh, or if your parents wants to send the money for fees or expenses how do we how do they send it there are two main ways uh, one is wire transfer and that's kind of the safest way because the both the banks are involved and there's no third party involved so you go to your bank say that you want to do international wire transfer um, it's very simple they will ask you three things uh, your account your name your bank account name bank name account number and a routing number or a swift code uh, routing code or a swift code is the same thing uh, some bank uses swift some bank use it routing you just have to use that uh, give it to your indian uh, bank account and they will use that and transfer the money now there's two things which you need to be careful uh, what is the rate you are getting and one how much charges are you going to get your when you send the money from your indian bank account they will charge you some money and and probably when you're receiving the money in your chase you will also get charged for some money what is that you will have to find out because it keeps changing and if you don't want to do wire transfer another way is using third party apps to transfer the money uh, western union transfer wise book there are others which you can use you can google it online but basically you can use those websites so for example western union what western union do, does is it's a third party so you will have to put your indian bank account where your money is coming from and then you will also have to put your uh, us bank account and it will do, it will do all the transfer within two days everything will be done and it will tell you how much time it will take how much charges it's going to be and what is the rate you are going to get it's very simple not complicated at all which one should you go 
I would feel much more safer with wire transfer just because it's you know both the banks you have control over so you can go to even third party I use third party right now to send money to India so I'm a big fan of using third party but I've never used third party over there in India to send the money I've always used third party over here to transfer the money to India again I would go with wire transfer probably your loan account or your bank account will be easily able to do it and the charges might be minimal but if you do see that the third party is giving you better rate and less fees there's no hesitation in trying it but try with a smaller amount first maybe try just with transferring 500 dollars 30,000 rupees 35,000 rupees see if everything goes fine and how quickly it is and then go with a bigger amount uh, never transfer big amount and you know if it gets stuck then if you can't pay fees can't pay rent whatever it is so you know try smaller amount first and then do the big amount all right i think that is it for this one that covers the money which you need to bring from india and the money what you need to do with those money when you come to united states uh, hopefully i answer all the questions if you still have more questions and more doubts please comment and let me know subscribe if you haven't already because every thursday we're going to be talking about personal finance and in the next one i'll talk about more on credit card credit history and apps which you need so all the fun things uh, how to manage your money how to manage your net worth and all of that will be coming very soon slowly slowly in each thursday episode but i hope you find this video helpful and valuable again any questions please let me know in the comment section until our next one keep smiling and keep hustling kara hustle every single day also i think the lens is much better than the previous one right comment <laughs>